Okay, uh, so this week, uh, we are going to download data from sensors. So we are going to download uh, the spatial data, like the tiger sheep file, uh, and also the non-spatial data. We are going to clean the data and also upload the data to AppStream. Um, and we create a new project in Access Pro, and then we are going to join um, those data together. And then we're going to explore the data and also try to edit or create new fields uh, in ArcGIS Pro. So let's first um, to download the data that we want to use. So let's go to Sensors <coughs> website. And next, let's select the Explore the Data. And we can just use Explore Data, the main page. Um, and that's, we can either go to data.census.gov or we can just search the population. So we are going to, we want to use the population data for all the states. So here you can see we have the population data. Uh, we are looking for the table B01003. Okay. And here we have the population for the entire United States but we want the population for each single state. So here we are going to add a filter and we go to the uh, geography and at the state level. So we see we want all the states and click search. Okay, uh, so now you can see we have a lot of data. So here again, we are going to go to the population uh, B01003 and now you can see we have population for each single state and also margin error and next let's click download and we let, let's still check uh, our table and we want to download the selected table and we just want the 2019 so uh, 2020 is not available yet and you can see we can download data in the CSV format. So that's uh, that's great. So let's say download and download now. So now the data is downloaded into my local computer. So it's not onto um, OneDrive or the AppStream yet. So if I now go to my downloads folder, you can see it is in a zip file. Uh, so depending on what uh, software, what um, a software or which Windows or Mac you're using. So in my case, I can just simply right click and I have the 7-zip and which I can extract to the 7-zip directly. Uh, or you can just double click, okay, which might be easier. And we're, now you can see we have three uh, files. The text file is just an uh, explanation of the data that we downloaded. So if you double click, and you can see that the data that you downloaded. Um, and also, if you look at the CSV file that, have, that has mental data, so that is a, a description of the data that we downloaded. So if we open that one, okay, and we can see that we have those fields. We have ID field, we have name, so that's the name of each single state. We have this field, B01003, so that is estimated total population. And also next field is a margin error. Okay. So finally, let's say we are going to open the real data. So that is a CSV file. Okay. And now you can see that we have a uh, name a uh, GOID and uh, as estimated total population and also margin error. So we don't want the second row, so uh, we can delete this one. And we don't want the margin error, so we can also delete this column. And let's name this one as population, so POP. Okay, and let's save this one. Um, as a new file. So let's save as. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to save this one to my OneDrive folder and not GOG 
to 15. And here I'm going to create a new folder. I call it uh, lab5. Okay, so I want to save that one to my OneDrive folder, lab5, and I will call it population clean, so that it is clean population in a CSV format. Okay, so that one is saved. So now I close that one. And now if I go back to my OneDrive folder, and now you can see I have the lab5, and also I have the population that clean. Uh, so if you cannot, for some reason, so if, for example, if I use a Mac computer, so you cannot, if you cannot clean the data, uh, so you can just download this data from the um, Canvas. So I will upload a copy of clean data on Canvas as well. So if you, for some reason, you cannot clean the data. Okay. So next, let's download uh, the, the ship file, so the sensors tiger ship file. So you can just search sensors tiger. Okay, and you will go. To, you will find out the tiger line ship files. And let's download the 2019 data. And also, we are going to use the web interface. Uh, and here we still we are going to select the uh, 2019 and we want the data at or all the state. So let's choose the state, um, which is here. Okay, so state and also equivalent. So let's see states and equivalents. And we submit and we download that file. So by default, it will go to my downloads folder. Okay, so it will go to my downloads folder. And uh, if I double click, <clears throat> you can see here, uh, I have those ship files. Okay, so it is a one single ship file, but has multiple files. So all the files together will be one single ship file. Okay, uh, so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my zip file, seven zip to extract that one. And next, I'm going to rename this one uh, ship file. And I'm going to copy that one to my OneDrive folder. Oh, actually cut that one. OK. OK, so now you can see in my OneDrive folder, uh, I have this population cleaned. And also I have this uh, ship file which now has seven files, okay? Um, so the shape is the one that contains um, the spatial data. Um, PRG is a file that contains the project information. Um, DBF is the one that contains um, the attribute, so the non-spatial information. Uh, so, so now make sure that you, you, you should have all the seven items together. So then you can upload, uh, then you can open the ship file into ArcGIS Pro. Okay, so for, so if for some reason that you cannot extract those files, so I will, I will also upload those individual seven items on Canvas so that you can download those seven items. And next, you uh, and you can use those um, uh, ship files on Canvas as well. So if you cannot extract the, the file by using the tools by using your own laptop. Just keep in mind that you have to, if you are, if you want to download um, the files and also upload individually, so you have to upload all those three, all those seven files together. So all those seven files. Okay. So next, I'm going to upstream. And before I log into uh, ArcGIS Pro, so let me check whether or not my file has been uploaded. So I go to my folder, OneDrive. Okay, now you can see the lab file. Uh, so that's the CSV file. And also here, uh, I also have the ship files. Okay, so that's great. So for some reason, if you cannot upload files by using OneDrive, or if you cannot extract the files, so you can download the file from Canvas 
and also you can go to your the folder that you can uh, is you can find um, um, on your app stream for example my folder and next you can upload the files to the folder that you you are using for this project but I always recommend using the OneDrive folder. Okay, so next let's open uh, ArcGIS Pro. So let's log in. Okay, so now ArcGIS Pro is started. Uh, so you can see our previous labs. So for this lab, let's create a new project. So let's see, create a map project. And we're going to call this one lab five. And let's move to our OneDrive folder, lab five, where we have the data. So it's here, um, my files, OneDrive. Because I, I uploaded all the data to OneDrive Lab 5 folder, so I will choose that one as my um, project folder. All right, let's say OK, and I don't want to create a new folder. OK, so now we have this uh, project created. And you can see that the, the analysis tools that we used in the previous lab are still here. So uh, you can feel free to open those um, tools. So next, if I go to my folder lab five, um, you can see here the CSV file is already here and also the ship file. So now you can see here in ArcGIS Pro, you can see we can only see three items. That is because ArcGIS Pro recognize the ship file so that the other four items are considered one single item okay so now we have the ship file and also we have the clean csv file so for some reason if you cannot find out your folder what you can do is you can right click the folder and you can add a folder connection and suppose that I cannot find out the uploaded files from the OneDrive, so you can just always go to your, um, by adding a new connection to your folder and find out where did you save or uploaded your file. So for example, if I click that, suppose I, I want to connect with this folder and I click OK. So now you can see in your project folder, so here you can see lab5 folder is your home folder and now you can access all the folders okay now you can set access the data in all those folders okay uh, since things now i have my csv file and also ship file so i don't need this folder so i just simply remove this folder okay uh, so we have the csv file and we have the ship file so Let's first drag uh, the CSV file. So if you drag that one, and because this is a uh, non-spatial data, so we, we will not see anything on the map. However, if you right click the layers, we can see now the CSV file is in our contents. And if we click open, and you can see here we can view the CSV file. So, uh, just as we saw that in the excels so here you can see that we have the GOID, we have the name and we have a population for each single state okay so that's pretty cool and if you go to the view of the table so when this uh, attribute table is open so we have this um, view and if you check fields or the columns uh, so now you can see the data type for all the fields. So for GOID, it is text. Uh, the length is 8,000. Uh, I think that's too much. And also for the name, it is also text. For the population, it is long integer. 
Okay, and also the format is also numeric. Okay, so let's close that one. So that is the population uh, information. It is saved on this CSV file, which is non-spatial data. Next, let's look at our uh, shapefile. So shapefile is uh, one of the most commonly used spatial data format. And uh, let's drag that one to our map. Okay, so now you can see it's, uh, uh, we have all the states. And uh, if you right click the, the layer and you can always zoom to the layer. Okay, or you can just uh, use the online uh, on screen navigator to zoom into the layer. Okay, so you can expand zoom into the, to the data. And next, let's just right click and let's look at the attribute table. So attribute table is where uh, the non-spatial data are saved. So here we see we have the uh, shape that is polygon. We have the regions, um, geo code, and also name of each single state and also the other information. Okay, but on this table, uh, we don't have the population information. So population is saved on the CSV file and the shape file only has uh, the ship and also the other like name, etc. Okay, and also we can see on the ship file we have uh, 56 uh, states and also on the population we only have 52 states. Okay, so that is because I think on this ship file we have some areas that um, are not included on the, census, on the census population table, but that's fine. Okay, so now we have all the data that are loaded to ArcGIS Pro. So next, we want to enrich our shape file. So we want to uh, see the population of each single state on this spatial data. So now we know that on this spatial data, we, for each single state, we have the name. And if you go to the fields, and you can see the name is also um, text, so the data type is also text. Um, and if we go to the population, we also have the name. And the name, if you remember, that is also text. So now we have two tables. Uh, so we can join this table, CSV file, to the sensors, uh, to the shape file, so that we can enrich the shape file. So let's right click the shape file, and you can see join and relates. So you can add a join or you can also add relate. So the difference between join and also relate is that relate can support many to many relationship, uh, one to many relationship. And, and join only support one to one and also one to many relationship. So let's click, let's add join here in this case. And now you can see the add join tool is now being open. Okay, and uh, it's nice that uh, in my case, they, they filled those uh, table names and also uh, join field automatically, which is pretty nice. Uh, so just in case uh, it was not filled automatically on your side, so the input table, so we, can, we, are, we are going to choose um, this ship file and also the join field. Uh, so if you click this drop down list, so we are going to choose name. And also the join table will be the CSV file. So you can just click the drop down list and you can make sure that we choose the CSV file. And the join field is also again the name. Okay. So next we can click this wrong button. Uh, we have this warning set that the name is not indexed, so the name is not the primary key, so which, which is not the best practice, but that's fine. So let's run it. Uh, for, for such type of small uh, data set, uh, so that is okay. So the best practice is that we are joining two tables based on their primary keys. 
Okay, so based on their primary keys, however, in this case, their primary keys do not match with each other. So because sensors has updated their uh, date website and also the data that's downloaded does not contain the geo ID. So it only has the geo underscore ID, but it does not have the ID that match to the geo ID on this uh, ship file. Okay, so now you can see that uh, this ship file, uh, we have more columns. So here we have the geo ID, underscore ID from the CSV file, the name from the CSV file, and also the population from the CSV file. So now we can see that um, this ship file has been enriched by including the population of each uh, state. So however, so if you just look at the table, you will see that there are some states or there are some regions that do not have the population. So you can see they have none data. Okay. So that is because for those areas, we don't have the population from this CSV file. So that's why that they have the non data. Okay. Uh, so now we have joined two uh, uh, tables together. And also if we open this ship file, so we are able to look at the population. So, but they are still saved into separate tables. So they are still saved in separate tables. So um, a recommended way is that we want to export this joint data, this joint ship file into a new uh, ship file, into a new uh, spatial data. So, so that next time we are going to use that one. So we don't worry that losing the data. So we right click and go to data. And if you want to export the spatial data uh, and also including the, the non-spatial data, the attribute table, you can just try the export features. If you just want to export the attribute table, you can export the table. So let's export the features. So now the export uh, tool is open. And you can see that input feature is a ship file that contains the joint information. And we want to export to our uh, geodatabase. So that is the file geodatabase created uh, for this project. And let's give it a name. So the name of our new feature, the exported feature, let's call it population states. Okay. And next, you can choose what field do you want to uh, include in your uh, export. So for example, if you uh, go to the bottom and you will see that those are the those are GUID is from the CSV file. So we may not want that because that is kind of duplicated. Not duplicated, but we will not use that one. And also the name. So name again, so that is duplicated. So we can remove the name. So basically we just keep the population. That is a new information and we keep everything else. And next we can write. Okay, it took about one minute. Uh, so on my side and you can see now it was success. Uh, so now if we go to the catalog, uh, so here we can see in the in this file geo database which was created when we created this project and now we have this population uh, states uh, so that is called a feature class uh, so this is the ship file so normally when we import the ship file into our other type of spatial data into a, a, a file geo database so it is called a feature class and in the geo database, if you right click, you can also create new data set. So the data set is, is like the, um, the folder you can think subfolders within your database that can organize your data. Or you can think that as a schema. You can also create data classes, tables, uh, relationship classes, uh, and also the other data set. And also the, here we have the CSV file and also the ship file that downloaded from sensors. Uh, so now we can remove 
um, the downloaded ship file. And also we can remove this CSV file. So we can just keep um, our feature class, all this exported uh, data open. And let's open the attributes table. Okay, so now you can see we have all the ship file that all the fields that uh, from ship file, um, and also we have the population. Okay, the population is joined from the CSV file and now is also kept in this exported feature. We also have two new fields, the length and also area, so that is by default when you create the ship file or the feature class in a geo database. So ArcGIS will calculate that one for you. Okay, uh, so next, let's go to the fields. So in the fields, there is something that we can also uh, do. Uh, so for example, we can check so which fields we want to show up or not. So for example, we don't want to see the regions, divisions. Okay, uh, let's keep the name. And also, let's say we want also highlight the name. Uh, let's uncheck the other fields. Uh, let's also keep the population. So we can uh, uncheck the other fields. Okay, so now if we click save. And if we go back to our attribute, um, I think we need to refresh the attribute. Okay, so now we have the name, which is highlighting, and also we have the population. So now the table is easier to uh, view. And so also we have those, uh, those four uh, regions, areas that do not have any population info. Okay, uh, next, let's say that we want to calculate the population density. So that is the population divided by the area of each single state. So how can we do that? Uh, so that is actually pretty simple. So if we go back to the fields, and if you cannot find our fields, you can go to data and click the fields. Okay, so here we can open the fields again. And, uh, and in this fields view, so we can a new field or add a new column. So let's say we add a new field. Uh, so the first one, let's say we want to calculate the, the population density. So we need, first we need the area. So we already have the ship area, but let's calculate it again. So let's say area in square kilometers and the data type, uh, let's choose Double. Okay, so that is area in square kilometers. And uh, let's click and create a new field, another new field, plus a new field. And for this one, we call it population density. And the type, so if you double click this one, we also need the double. Okay. So we just added two new fields. One is area and one is population density. And let's say save. Okay, so now on this attribute table, you can see now we have the two new fields that are created or two new columns that are created. And all the values are none, which is fine. And next, we can close this fields view. Uh, so let's first calculate the area. So in this attribute table, uh, if we right click this field, and you can see here we have the function called calculate geometry. Okay, so let's select calculate geometry. And next, uh, let's say, okay, the target field is will be area and we choose properties, we choose area. And you can see because 
uh, our data is not projected. So we can only choose area that is uh, the first one, geo DESIC. So that means we are, we are going to use GCS, not PCS, to calculate the area, which is not the best practice in this case. Um, an area unit, so let's choose uh, square kilometers. And next, let's run it. So that is calculating the area. So we right click the field and we choose calculate geometry uh, attribute. And next, we choose the properties property of the of the spatial attribute that we want to calculate. Because it is not projected, so we, we can only choose the first one. So that is, again, that is not the best practice. Uh, okay, so now you can see here in the area, so we do have the area that been calculated. Okay, so that's, that's great. Uh, next, we are going to calculate the population density. So population density equals population divided by the area in kilometers. So to do that, let's again right click the, the, this field or this um, column. Because we are not going to calculate the geometry, so we are going to do a field calculation. So let's calculate the field. Uh, so again, we are going to apply on this population density. Uh, the exp expression tab, we can use Python 3, so that's fine. So here with the population density equals. So now you can see all the fields that are here. So you can define your calculation. So here we see population equals a population of each individual state. So if you double click, you can see we have the escalation mark around the field name. That is a syntax uh, in this field calculation. So that's fine. And let's say choose divide by the area. So double click area and we have this escalation mark that surrounds each single field. That's that's fine. And next, let's run it. Okay, so basically we are using population divide um, the area and we will have the population density. Okay, so now you can see that for most states we do have the population density. And we also have the warning. So that is because for some areas, we don't have the population. So the population density will also be non data. OK, so that's great. So next, so now we have the uh, population and also population density for this data. Uh, so if we look at the mental data, so mental data is a data about data. So if we look at the mental data, and we can see that it's empty because we created this spatial feature and it is empty. So again, that is also not the best practice. So suppose you want to share this one with others. Uh, so we should fill in some mental data. So let's right click this feature and let's say we want to edit the mental data. So let's click editing. And so here there are some updated uh, fields. Okay, uh, so let's add title. So that is, uh, you can add any title you like. So population of all states and tag population sensors and summary. Uh, so you can write your own summary. Okay, and you can also add descriptions, credits, etc. So let's add credits to US sensors. And in the description, and we can also provide URL. So let's say we want to provide where we downloaded the data. So okay, so let's say we want put uh, the Tiger website. 
Okay, and we provide this one a hyperlink. Okay, and you can also add use limitation and also what is the appropriate scale range. Uh, so let's say that is at the country level. Okay, and after you are done with that, so you go to the mental data and we can save it. Okay, so once that has been saved, let's now go to view the metadata. And now you can see that it has tags, the name, summary, and also the description and also credits. And if you click this URL, so that will uh, direct you to the website. And now let's go to the geography. To, into the geography panel, so let's zoom in. Uh, to our data. Okay. And the next, if you go to the catalog view and not preview, and you can see there is a option called create thumbnail. So let's do that. So once we create a thumbnail, and now you can go back to the metadata. And if we refresh, or if you just uh, reopen the, uh, the view metadata, and you will see that the, okay. Uh, so if you reopen the metadata, or if you just refresh the metadata, and you will see the thumbnail is also there. Okay, so that will give you a very quick uh, introduction to other uh, users who, if you want to share this one with others. Okay, so that is editing the mental data. Uh, so now let's close uh, all the windows. So let's just leave the map open. Okay, uh, so let's zoom into the map. Um, so when we are viewing the map, and also if we want to explore the non-spatial information, for example, the population of each single state, uh, what we can do is that we can go to the map, and we can just check the explore, which is by default checked. And next, if you just click each single state on the map, uh, this error is not correct, because this is because when I uh, configured the, the app stream, so I, I forgot to do something, so that's why you see this error. So if you are using your Access Pro on your own desktop, you should not see this window pop up. So let's just simply close this one. And next, you will see that uh, for each for the uh, for the state you selected, you can see the name which is highlighted, population, area, and also the population density. Okay, so if you select a different state. Okay, again, sorry for this one. And you can see California, the total population um, area and also population density. So that is a pop-up window. Uh, we can also customize the pop-up window. So let's just right-click the layer. And you can see here we can configure the pop-ups. Okay, uh, so you can configure the title and also you can configure the field. So let's just click this one. Uh, you can see here I already typed something. Uh, so let's just type the title like population. Uh, so we want the title to be for each state that you selected, it, it, it will show in the state, uh, the name of that state. So let's say publish up. And next, go to the field and we choose name. Okay, so now. Next, in a pop-up window, so it will show the name of the state. Okay. And next, we don't want the field. So let's just uh, remove this element. And let's add a text field. Okay. And next, let's add it. So we can customize the pop-up window here. So, so here, for example, this is the population of uh, next, we see the state name is, and we can also 
set the population value. Okay. And we can also see the population density is, and we can also insert the field which has a population density. Okay. Uh, you can also enable the other formats like uh, numbering, bullets, and also different colors, highlight, etc. Okay. Uh, you can also even create a chart or adding images. Uh, so for example, if you see click charts and also you can edit. So you can try to create different chart like bar chart, uh, pie chart, uh, line chart, and you can choose which field you want to display. Okay. Uh, however, because I uh, forgot to set up this part, so the chart and the image may not work. Okay, uh, again, sorry for that. So if you're using ArcGIS Pro on your own desktop, and you can try create a set chart and those images. You can also refer to my another uh, more concise video tutorials, seeing that how we can create chart uh, in the pop-up window. Okay, so for now, we just change the title and also the description. Uh, now, if we close that one, so now if we see we, we click the Virginia, Okay, and you can see the population of Virginia. So that's a title, and also population of Virginia is this one, and the population density is this one. Okay, so now it's just showing, it just shows um, uh, the content that we uh, set in the pop up window. Okay, finally, so uh, another way or another quick way is that can we give each state a different color? showing the population or showing the population density? Uh, the answer is yes. So if we go to the appearance, uh, now let's choose a symbology. Uh, here we want to use graduated colors because we want to show the population density, which are not unique and also not symbol symbol. So let's choose graduated colors. And uh, here you can see we can choose a different field. Uh, so based on which one do you want to visualize? So let's say we want to visualize the population density. Okay. Um, and also do you want to normalize? No. And which method do you want to classify your data? So here they have different type of methods. Uh, we will talk those methods in the next week. So let's keep uh, natural breaks, which is the default one, and also five class, that's fine. Uh, and also let's use a default color. Of course, you can choose a different color schemas. Uh, we also will talk about color uh, later this semester. Okay. So now we can see where we have those high population densities. Okay. And finally, so if you remember that um, uh, in the map, so if you click this globe icon, so that will be full extent, so that will show the entire world. Uh, however, our data only focus on the United States. Okay, so we can set the extent, the default extent of this map. So let's go to properties of the map. So not a layer. Let's go to properties of the map, and let's go to extent. And here, let's say we want to use a customer extent, and we want to use a, the current visible extent as the default extent. And now let's click OK. Let's see if now we zoom out, and if we could go want to full extent, so now you can see this will be our full extent. OK, so that is for this lab. So in the future labs, uh, we are talk about how to create uh, uh, professional uh, maps. So here for now, you can just take a screenshot for the lab.